Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on Thursday, December 1st, 2022. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.01 p.m. Uh, pursuant to the decision of the town of Amherst, as permitted by the state, we are meeting remotely. I'm going to call on committee members at this time so that we know that you can hear us and that you can be heard. Uh, I'm going to go. My name is Sam McLeod, uh, at large member chair. Uh, Andy? Present. Michelle? Present. Tim? Present. Robin? Present. Matt? Present. And I'm not seeing uh, Dave Williams or Katie Ellen Zobel as of yet, but we do have a quorum, so we're able to commence. Uh, and taking a look at our agenda, although they were Katie's minutes, uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve any outstanding minutes. Uh, you know, I don't know if it makes sense for us to do that at this point in time without the minute taker here to uh, make any edits. I guess my one comment I might say now is, does anyone who's present here have, and I see that Katie has just arrived, does anyone uh, present here have any uh, suggested edits to the updated minutes that were sent uh, by Sonia? These are the minutes of November 10th. Uh, Did everyone take a look at the minutes? I see a number of hands. Um, I'm not hearing any further edits to the minutes as updated. Uh, Katie, do you have any comments on the uh, updated minutes or anything you've received since you last provided them? No, um, thank you, Sam, for uh, your early edits and I think I haven't heard from anyone else, no. Okay. Well, uh, since everyone's, or most everyone's had a chance to look at them and there are no further edits, uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of November 10th? So move. Uh, is there a second? Second. Was that uh, Michelle? I yes, that was me. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion to approve the minutes of November 10th uh, as submitted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with the roll call vote. Uh, I, Sam McLeod will say yes. Uh, Andy? Aye. Tim? Aye. Matt? Yes. Katie? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Robin? Aye. And I'm not seeing Dave at this moment. So uh, I believe that's a seven to zero vote to approve the minutes. We have a number of presentations scheduled for today, commencing. Uh, Excuse me, Sam. Yes. Oh, minutes oh we later. probably should. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Sonia. I, I very much appreciate you uh, uh, bringing that up. So we do need a minute taker for the meeting. Uh, including what has just passed. Uh, are there any volunteers? I can volunteer. Wonderful, Matt. Matt, thank Matt. you. Thank you so much, Matt. So uh, that will be commencing from the onset of the meeting and the vote and from now forward. Uh, yeah. You can use the templates that have existed uh, and passed around, it can be quite helpful. Uh, yes. So our- Sam, Sam? Yes? I had a, just a quick question about minutes. Sure. Since we're recording these as a video, is there a, a requirement to have um, minutes in writing? There is. I'm seeing Sonia's head nod. I'm seeing Holly's and Holly. head nod. Okay. So a transcript of that, of a video, you know, of the meeting doesn't count? No, oh. not at this point in time. I just was wondering if since we have a video and a recording, if we could have more abbreviated minutes, just of not of all the discussion as we've done in the past, but of um, votes, is that possible? Uh, my understanding is that that is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim? Well, 
I just submitted the minutes <laughs> for the 17th, the meeting of the 17th, and I did a little bit more abbreviated version than yours, Katie. Uh, so. Yeah, good. I, I just think the past, you know, I've sort of was going based on past experience and I, I think, which was good when there wasn't a recording, I think it's super helpful to go back to have a record like that, but right. if you have a recording and I know it's sometimes the recordings fail, but um, I, I would propose that we have something a little simpler, um, a little more streamlined for folks. Maybe it's, I'll take a look at Tim's and maybe we could <laughs> follow well, there your were no votes. There were no votes in mine. And previously, when I've done minutes for other committees, I've just listed the vote totals. I haven't said who voted what, which way in terms of detail, but I don't know. We probably need to be consistent. I agree with you on that. It's it's certainly uh, helpful to have the videos for uh, the community. Uh, my own belief is that condensed minutes are uh, helpful for those reading. Uh, it can be a challenge for minute takers in the involved uh, meetings with lots of questions and discussions. I, I think for the time being, we, we should leave it to the discretion of the minute taker. Um, but the majority of the minutes we've been taking are relatively abbreviated. It gets tough when you have a meeting with so many questions, such as the last one. Uh, so, uh, well, one set, one suggestion would be uh, in the template of the meeting, meeting right up front, indicate that they're available online at and list how you, the website is a possibility, just to, in case someone is looking at the minutes. That's that's possible. actually a good thing to include. Um, yeah, because I didn't include it, and nor, nor did Katie yeah, and her yeah. minutes, but no, that I, might be an interesting point to put that reference point in there. The videos are quite helpful, actually, and I well, they're helpful for the minute. Uh, uh author because that, that is that as well <laughs> no question robin was your hand up oh yeah i just wanted to say that um when i was working up in greenfield and i was tasked with taking minutes um I, I, it, it's a it's a skill to get down to just a really brief assessment of of the salient points but i think that's that was kind of what i was directed was all mm -hmm. that was required um you know, a, a brief summary of the salient points of any discussion and and the vote. So the hard part is is doing that while you're taking figuring that out while you're taking. It. <laughs> it's easier said than done. Brief is hard, <laughs> but if you it's, can get if you can develop it's that quite skill, hard. Fine, yeah. <laughs> I rely exclusively on the uh, videotapes. Well, do the minutes after the fact. So we're hearing somebody's voice. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, so one other uh, comment is uh, based on our first meeting, the suggestion was made that we uh, pose two questions to all applicants. Uh, and I went ahead and put them together and Sonia sent them out to all of the applicants, the two questions being the following. Uh, and we gave them until Sunday, this Sunday to respond. Uh, so that would be previous uh, the first two rounds and this round. The two questions were, can your project move ahead with less CPA funding than has been requested? That's one question. The other was, is it necessary for your project to go forward? Is it necessary for your project to go forward in this year's CPA award cycle? So those two questions have been posed to all applicants. They're beginning to respond. We gave them until December 4th. Some uh, uh, applicants, or at least uh, one mentioned that they would seek to address them in today's uh, discussion. But just for your own awareness, those two uh, pertinent questions have been put out there for all applicants. Um, I don't, let me see who's in the audience. Um, our first presentation is on Crocker Farm Elementary okay. um, Playground. Doug's out there, so should I bring him in? I, I do see Doug. I would say let's commence at this time, uh, Okay. given the nature of our prior meetings. If uh, Doug is available, if not, we'll wait five minutes for him, of course. I have a question, Sam, um, yeah. while we're waiting. Um, 
Sonia, you had sent something relative to the community development block grant. I didn't quite. I don't know I've quite answered a question I had. Whoever posed it was great, but um, like, do we essentially is are there people who are like our projects that could double dip? Essentially, I think that to me, that's like the, the main question is I see Matt, yeah. do you want to, your question? Yeah, yeah go ahead. well, I was the one that posed the question and the reason I posed it was precisely because the um, I was trying to understand the um, the affordable housing request for the um, supplemental rental um, rent supplement um, and they were getting the funding for the staff person from the community development block grant and the funding for the payment to the to the tenants from um, from from CPA so that's an example where they are taking from both pools um yeah um sonia thank you for uh, providing the response to matt's question for all of us to read i thought it was uh, quite helpful uh it, the two pools certainly still do exist and there may be some applicants i don't know at the moment that uh, request funding from both i know that we do ask yeah. in our application there could, there could be others there I know could that, be others there could i know that we do ask in our application process uh other sorts of funding that are being sought. Um, so, uh, but I, I do see that Doug is here. Doug, can you hear us? Absolutely. Okay, we can see you and I can hear you as well. So uh, thank you for taking the time and um, we might as well commence uh, with your uh, presentation on the Crocker Farm Elementary School Playgrounds. Uh, floor is all yours. Great, thank you. So this is a continuation of a, a request made last year. Last year, we had requested uh, funding for both design and construction uh, as you went through your process and thought about your opportunities and, and available resources. You had funded about 50,000 or exactly 50,000 for design work. Uh, we're getting in the process of, of, of taking that in, in taking action on that now. Um, and so this is just to follow up and, and go into the construction phase to, to make and, and adjust uh, the equipment and, and make repairs and renovations to the the kindergarten playground behind uh, Crocker Farm. Initially, we kind of left the language broad to include, you know, all the playgrounds there. Really, not all the playgrounds, the kindergarten playground, and then the the main playground. The preschool playground was done a couple a few years ago with CPA funds, um, and so uh, it'll you know the focus really is going to be uh, on the kindergarten playground, which is behind the school, um, and so the the need to renovate and, and to update the equipment there, but also make it safer and more accessible. It's not currently accessible uh, to, to students that, that have uh, mobility challenges. And so uh, that's the, the opportunity here that we're, we're seeking to get funding for is to, to, to do some repair work there. Um, and so it's, it, is an, you know, it is an area of the, of the, of the, uh, of the play spaces that, that needs some attention. It's a smaller space, so it's a little more modest uh, request. The, the other play space is a much larger area and, and will require a, a little more substantial uh, investment. And I think also the, the school PGO is probably uh, gonna be much more of a partner with us relative to that larger play space uh, for the, the older children. Um, so the, uh, so the, it's really about uh, you know, uh, trying to, to uh, update the equipment and the space and make it more accessible to students. Uh, we do currently have, uh, through the town's capital projects, some funds for ADA requirements and, and addressing some ADA issues in and around the schools. Uh, it's a broad-based uh, ADA support of capital funds that we can use and, and we'll probably use and leverage on this project to, to help out. Um, but other than that, we've not made any other formal requests of, of uh, sort of town capital or anyone for, for, for this project. So that kind of gets to one of the questions you guys asked for. Um, and so uh, I, I, you've seen the application, we've given you pictures, uh, that sort of thing, the, the, the need is there. It's, it is uh, a school we're going to continue to be in for a long time. Making investment in this is, is we think valuable and, and using CBA dollars to help with that. It makes sense to us as well. And, and it is a community resource. So it is, it is a space that gets used for the school, but also for anybody that lives in the area. Uh, you know, when school's not in session, they can come and use the space and it is accessible. Uh, from that from that standpoint um, 
the one other question that you guys ask about a little bit is is whether or not if, if the funding were to be pushed back, uh, would that be okay? I think for us, we can we can manage that for sure. We'd like to kind of keep the project moving as we do design, uh, you know, this winter and spring. But at the same time, if if it's such that uh, you know in your you know evaluation of your resources and timing and that sort of thing, if, if we were to be pushed off, uh, that would be fine. Um, it, it's unlikely if we got a design in place by the late spring <clears throat> that we'd be able to contract with anyone to work on it this summer. So, so having funding on July 1 is not as critical. And so uh, it, it would be okay if it went into a, a subsequent cycle if it, if it had to. Um, certainly we'd love for you to, to fund it. We'd take action as best and, and as quickly as we could if you did fund us. Um, but I think there's some questions that have come up relative to you know some other projects in, in town relative to uh, surface materials and, and environmental concerns, that sort of thing. So. Um, those are also things we're going to have to kind of keep in mind as we as we uh, do the design work on this play space. And so we're we're uh, you know that'll take a little more time than maybe had been thought of before relative to that. But I think um, you know this is a space for our youngest students. You know it's an important space as far as play and and you know healthy uh, recreation space in the town. So we're hopeful that you can can give us some support in this regard. So I think I'll stop there and let you guys ask questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Doug, for uh, keeping us up to date. And if I understand correctly, you responded to one of the two questions uh, that were posed regarding the necessity, necessity of doing it this year. Um, so I see some hands up here from the committee. So I'm going to open the uh, floor for the committee members to uh, inquire of Doug. Uh, Tim, I saw your hand first. Can you go okay. ahead? Sure. Uh, Doug. Um, Reading it through, uh, you use like a metric for cost per student to come up with a cost, right? Um, and I looked at the proposal and my notes said it was $1,250 per student times 400 students. I think that's what lets that when my notes say, I'm not sure they're 100% accurate. I think they are. But doing the math, that's $500,000. Uh, which would be the 50 for the design, which we proved last year, and the 450 for the construction. Now, there are not 400 kindergarten students, right? Uh, no, there's not. But the total, you know, it is a space that's used by all of the students. And so, you know, it, it, it predominantly is the younger students, but some older students use it as well. And just given the size and space of it, also, you know, uh, looking at uh, you know, recent projects like Kendrick Park and sort of the price escalation that we've seen there, I think this still sort of fits within that realm of, of, of a price tag. Um, but, but uh, you know, the, the, that is an estimate that we use to, to, to ballpark the number, but, you know, it will be much more refined as we go through our design process. But um, I think that it is a space that's used by more than just the youngest kids. Um, it's focused more on them and sized more for them, but there are kids that are older that use it as well. So hence the using of this, the full student population. Okay. Uh, Matt. Um, yes, thank you, Tim, and thank you, Doug. Tim actually asked my primary question already. My secondary question is, can you remember the last, uh, the, 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 the date and the budget for the last um, playground reservation? I think it was probably something like 2012 and 250,000 if I, my memory, is okay. So are you meaning there at Crocker Farm in particular or? Cro Crocker Farm in particular, yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know for sure. And that would have been probably in the space that's that's more for the older kids. I don't know that we've done anything in, in that area. Yes, yeah, so I think what I think what happened is that they um, they mainly rent, did the space for the older kids because my children went to Crocker Farm, so I remember. They mainly did the space for the older children, and then they took some of the older playground equipment and installed it in the kindergarten kindergarten playground. So the stuff in the kindergarten playground is what they recovered from the last renovation. Right, and I would I would also say that there's some of that equipment that, <clears throat> uh, well, if I'd gone to school and Amherst might have been there when I went to school because uh, there's a couple of pieces of equipment that are really uh, you know of a of a sort of more. Uh, archaic uh, time frame but okay so, so, so you don't you don't remember specifically more any better than i okay no, I thank you um katie thanks doug i appreciate this and your work on it um i just it you're using terms and i think in the proposal it used terms about renovation and refurbishment but i think what you're saying is new 
brand new. I mean, are any of those, it just, it, it seemed like what you had been saying in the proposals that things needed to be fixed or refurbished. And I didn't know if that's really what was happening and that cost was based on refurbishment or if it was really on brand new purchasing of and installing. I, I would say it's a little bit of both. In other words, the equipment would, would most likely be, uh, most of it would probably need to be replaced. That being said, you know, the, the grounds, the, uh, the, the uh, area in which those pieces of equipment sit, their structure, their shape, their, their interaction with the, the sort of sidewalk space that's in the back and the, and the, the, um, the walkways and, and pathways that are there, you know, those would be, um, you know, renovations of existing or modifications of those. So it's, it's um, you know, if, if there is equipment that can be reused, we absolutely would, but, but there's a good chance that most of the equipment would be changed out. And, and, uh, and so it's really renovating the, the, the physical space, the layout and the, and the, uh, the surface of the of the playground to it would need to be uh, well the, the reason i sorry go ahead sorry no, i was just going to say is that's that's really the, the renovation is more about the the physical location of it the the uh, topography of it the the surfaces that we have um and then the equipment would be more more new than not. okay okay because i i was just wondering if when i heard refurbishment i was thinking well maybe it would be less costly than your estimate because you're estimating it based on a, a new playground um, that 1250 cost and I had the same question that Tim had I was thinking oh well it's for it's for you know three four five classes versus the entire school so I thought it, you know since it's smaller you know in scale it might be less costly than the national estimate um, or than the 400 so I just didn't know if that would but you'll know more as you get the design completed got it Thank you. Uh, Dave Zomack. <clears throat> Thanks, Sam. I was just going to add two things. One is just to remind everybody that the playgrounds at Crocker after school and when school's not in session during the summer, those playgrounds are available to the entire community. So these are really community resources. They're at Crocker Farm, but um, they are used. I, I live five minutes from Crocker Farm. My kids went there. They're used all year long by lots of kids uh, after school and on weekends. Um, I wanted to just address Matt's question. If I heard it correctly earlier, I think you were asking about what's the most recent playground project at Crocker. If I heard that, I came in a little late. I think the most recent, and Doug or Sean could correct me, but I worked very closely on the preschool renovation to the, the outdoor uh, preschool space which I believe was in the 200 plus thousand range. And that was a complete renovation of a non-ADA space for the preschool. And I think that was the most recent CPA dollars we've spent at Crocker Farm, a wonderful project spearheaded by the preschool teachers. Um, I don't remember all the names, but really resulted in, a, in an amazing transformation of that space. That space, by the way, is also available to parents uh, with young children after school and on weekends, et cetera. And we made very clear that that that, need, uh, that was a requirement of the project. Um, so I, I hope if I if I address that um, um, for Matt. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing that with us, Dave. Um, I guess I have a question, Doug, which is, have you, do you have anyone in mind that has been considered for the design uh, work? Is there? Uh, we do not at, at, at the at the moment. Uh, you know, we, we would have to be. You know, as as procurement rules. You know, for these kind of things uh, exist, we'll we'll have to go out and get quotes from folks relative to that, and we'll have to articulate that in a in a formal way to you know sort of scope the the, the work and then have them uh, and and then have them bid on it. I mean, there are obviously some some folks that that have worked recently in town relative to like Hendrick Park and some of those that you know might be familiar with us and familiar with you know how the town works and and be uh, uh, maybe leading candidates in that regard. And certainly, if you have names you want to share, I'm happy to hear them. Um, but we don't we don't have anybody in mind at the moment, and and we'll we'll keep the process you know sort of blind and and. You know, meet the pure state procurement requirements as, as necessary. Okay, great. And uh, just a follow up question: Depending on the time frame of when this project comes to fruition, um, 
what what is being done with the equipment that's damaged in the current time frame? That is to say, is there some method of repair or maintenance affiliated with them to get from point A to point B? Uh, or has that been considered? Yeah, I think that, you know, what we've done and what we continue to do in that location is, is keep the equipment as safe as possible. I mean, obviously swings are, are swings and, and so, you know, the seats are, are, are kept in good order and the, and the chains and that sort of thing and, the, and, they're, and they're sturdy as far as location. Um, any of the other equipment that, that might be having uh, failures of, of, of uh, parts of it or something like that, uh, we're going to make safer or, or repair as, as best we can. We use our operating budget to try to manage those, those kind of circumstances they come up. Um, you know, and, and of course we replace uh, wood chips and, and you, know, so, you know, supporting uh, groundwork to, to keep the, uh, you know, the, the landing places for those, those, uh, those pieces of equipment as safe as we can as well. So we've got ongoing work that we always do and, and try to you know, stay on top of to prevent any, any serious injuries and, and uh, any limitations on the equipment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tim. Yeah, just a quickie. Does anybody know what the, for comparison purposes, what the cost of the Kendrick Park play, playground was? I sort of do. I don't know if Dave might be a better resource. I'm just curious now. And I Sure, if it's okay, Sam. It's certainly. Uh, and again, Sonia can help me. We were just looking at this for another reason today or yesterday, I think it's about 650 in total. We got a $400,000 grant, a park grant through the state, and then CPA added in 235, 240-ish. I don't, I don't have that right off the top of my head, but it was around 650 for the total cost of the Kendrick Park uh, playground. And that included some sidewalks and, and other connecting walkways out to the various streets there. I think that's ballpark. I know CPA was 259. Yep, 259 plus four. That's that's the math right there, because we got a we got the full park grant, 400,000. Great project. Um, are there any other questions from uh, committee members or those uh, in attendance? I'm not seeing any, Doug. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to uh, submit the proposal and to also come here and answer questions for us. Uh, if we have further questions, we'll certainly uh, reach out to you. Um, so thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you guys for the time tonight. Yeah. Good luck with your deliberations. Thank you. So uh, just FYI, everyone, uh, Dave Williams did communicate with me that he's unable to attend this meeting. Uh, he's out of town. For the uh, housing member of the committee, just FYI. Um, so our next proposal is from, on the agenda is from the conservation area improvements. And Dave, you had emailed earlier indicating that Aaron uh, Jacques would uh, be uh, presenting uh, for the uh, proposal. And I do see Aaron is in the room. Uh, and I see you nodding your head, Aaron. I assume that means you can hear us. Yes. Uh, so, and we can hear you now. So uh, if you're ready, uh, we'd be glad to uh, hear your uh, comments regarding the proposal. Uh, Sam, if I could, I just wanted to introduce everyone to Aaron. Aaron is a relatively new um, member of the conservation staff as our wetlands administrator. She's been with us a, a, a couple, two years now or so, but her first presentation to CPAC. Um, but Aaron grew up in Amherst. Um, and, and knows the town well and has been a, a terrific addition to our conservation and development team. So I asked her uh, if she would make this presentation and she jumped on it and um, I'll let her take it away. So thank you, Erin, for doing this and, and being here. Sure, my pleasure. Is it okay if I share my screen? Uh, certainly. Okay. Can everybody see? Yes. Excellent. All right. Um, so I am here tonight um, presenting um, a proposal for us to request $100,000 for passive recreational improvements on conservation land. 
And the reason um, we're making these requests as recreational improvements is because that request allows us to use these funds on any property, any conservation property in town, as opposed to requesting them under conservation, which would um, restrict us to only using those funds on lands which were purchased with CPA funds. Um, I'm not going to read every word on these slides. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because there's a lot of slides to run through and I apologize. I have a puppy whining in the background if you hear a strange noise. Um, <clears throat> the trail systems in Amherst are well used and very well loved, as you probably all know. And as a result of that, we're in need of financial support to take care of them. Um, when I say trails, we're talking more than just trails. We're talking bridges, bog bridges, parking, signage, and beaches in town. We um, manage over 2,000 acres of open space and over 80 miles of trails in the town. And there is a constant need for um, maintenance and improvements on these lands. Um, which include um, improvements for ac accessibility, uh, safety, um, and correcting historic issues that might exist on the properties. So what I'm going to run through um, is, you know, so basically our, our goals are to improve the lands for passive recreational use, um, encourage greater use, um, through responsible ecosystem planning, make the trail system safer, correct historic problems, and add structures where appropriate. And I've highlighted um, future projects and pr um, provided some examples of some historic projects. Um, projects that we complete frequently require um, wetland delineation, plan design, permitting, and costs for labor and materials. We only have two staff to take care of all of our lands, so sometimes we do have to contract out certain projects to make sure that things can get done um, in a timely manner and or if equipment or um, certain skills are required that go beyond um, what we can do internally. So these are a couple examples of projects that we have sort of on our queue that we need to get done. Um, the um, National Guard Bridge, which is on the Harvey Allen Trail, is in trouble and uh, having some safety issues that need repair. Puffers Pond, we have the Kevin Flood Bridge, which needs painting and repair. We also have a lot of issues at Puffers Pond with trail systems that need um, correction and um, issues with beach erosion that need to be corrected. Uh, Mount Pollux, we have issues with parking safety there. We also don't have a kiosk at Mount Pollux, which we would like to, um, to add. Houston Gage, um, issues, with, issues with historic um, bog bridging that needs repair. Um, new gates are, is another big issue that yeah. we see all over um, in town. Um, boardwalk repairs, this is a good example at Larch Hill. And then um, adding um, boardwalks. This is an example from Sweet Alice Conservation Area where trails go through wetlands and are causing significant damage. So we want to try to correct some of those issues. ADA accessible trails. Um, we have several trails that have been designed for accessibility in town, which do need ongoing maintenance. Um, on a regular basis and that's really important for us not only on existing trails to maintain existing access but also to try to um, uh, sort of take existing trails and make them accessible for people these are a couple examples of existing sort of ada accessible trail locations in town a few examples of recently completed projects to show you what we do with the resources that are given to us. Um, this is recently completed um, parking area. Previously, the parking um, at Bay Road was shoulder parking. Now we have a beautiful um, new parking area, a uh, new uh, staircase, which was um, created for access, greater access at Sweet Alice. Um, this was a, um, a stream restoration project new signage. Here's a safety improvement on an existing bridge at the KC Trail off Southeast Street. We also um, try to partner whenever we can with organizations to get grant funds. This is an example of uh, several slides of funds made possible by DCR Trail Grant, a uh, $30,000 grant. And then a uh, recent project completed, Groff Park, Emily Dickinson Trail, um, signage improvements. Um, we did some improvements to the trail system um, and also um, corrected a interpretive trail. So 
that was five minutes and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you folks may have. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Aaron. Uh, it's very nice to have the visuals. Uh, and would you be able to share that presentation with the committee? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have it in PDF format um, or fine. PowerPoint. Either method is fine. Uh, the okay. photographs are great to see. Um, uh, committee members, questions? I see uh, Matt, your hand is up. Yeah, thanks, Aaron and uh, Dave. Uh, my question is sort of about um, the funding for these. In a previous conversation with Dave, I heard that the, the budget for materials, annual budget for materials from the town is $5,000, which obviously doesn't go very far. So I guess you're reliant on um, grants, basically, for any, any of these trail improvements. So um, I know you've got this proposal with CPA. You've had some recent grants from, I think, the state. Um, what do you think the, the prospects are in terms of how much you can expect other than CPA on an annual basis going forward? If you could, if you could just guess or estimate. So as Aaron, as Aaron spoke to, um, you know, we, we try to be as creative as we can when we go out there and, and look for funds. Um, you know, Aaron mentioned the Robert Frost Trail grant we got from the state, $30,000 uh, a few years ago. The Kestrel Trust has been very generous, uh, basically, you know, partnering with us. They've been our partner for about 50 years, but in recent years, um, you know, being very generous with, you know, uh, donations for trailhead parking. They've given us um, money for a new bridge at Amethyst Brook. You may, if any of you use Amethyst Brook, you know that there is one, there's three, historically there's been three bridges there across the Amethyst Brook. There's only two now. One got washed away or sheared away by ice. Uh, we're planning to rebuild that, but that's, you know, it's a big chunk of change, probably 30 to $40,000. Kestrel has donated to that effort. So we're, cre we're, we're as creative as we possibly can. We are currently using, working our way through previous CPA allocations. I don't off the top of my head know where those, um, where those are, but um, that money goes quickly, particularly in this climate with um, uh, escalating materials costs. And then, so we, we utilize CPA dollars and then Matt, to your question, we also have gotten some modest allocations through the capital budget for um, specific projects like large bridge repair or replacement. You know, some of these bridges, I'll give, give you an idea, you know, we just did a bridge that Aaron showed a, showed a, um, a slide of, which was uh, with all of the wetland work, all of the stream bank work was $22,000. Another bridge that she showed you was $6,500, uh, and that was just labor. Uh, as she mentioned, where we can, we try to use our own staff to do as much of the work as we possibly can. But some of these larger bridges, we need engineers to help us. The town engineer has been great, but we need to call in experts to help us with some of the, the larger projects. So I don't know, again, Matt, your your numbers were that you referenced that, that I mentioned were right. Our our grounds maintenance budget is around $6,500 a year, um, and that's for kind of the everyday stuff. Um, so these larger projects, bog bridging, uh, pressure treated lumber, uh, hardware, things like that um, come from CPA, grants, Kestrel Trust, capital, and, and being as creative as we can. We do get donations for trails as well, but not a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Andy. <clears throat> thanks, Sam. Uh, thanks for the presentation, Aaron and Dave. The um, I would agree the, uh, the the deck was great, just getting the visuals of this. Um, I think you're probably aware we've tried to go out to visit sites um, where possible, and this was like an impossible task, right, because it's, it's everywhere. So I'm just wondering, given, you know, you've called out bridges, parking, ADA, is there one area in particular you want to lean into and maybe like this is to, to answer a question of if I were to to be able to visit some of these like should I be looking at a couple first like do you have some that are really your highest priority that 
you would like us to get kind of our eyes on to help understand what this is? And then I will just add on to that. I know we, we've already asked you the question whether this can be piecemealed. That's something I'd also love to, to hear. And it can be in the written comment if you don't know now. So. So let me let me start and then and and let Aaron jump in. Um, I did respond to Sam's two questions of every applicant. I believe he asked that of every applicant uh, on your behalf. You know, so yeah, this is can we can we do with less this year? And I forgot the second part of the question. Um, but but basically, you know, what is our plan over time? This is. We're in this for the long haul, right? We own these properties. They're permanently protected in perpetuity. Um, 80 miles of trails is what we have. I have been very clear. We have not expanded the trail system. I've been with the town over 15 years. I am not anxious to expand the trail system any more than it really is. Frankly, we need to take care of what we have. The only exception, real exception to that is the purchase of Hickory Ridge, which I truly believe was kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity for the town and for this generation. So yes, there is some trail expansion at Hickory Ridge and we're already being creative there. We just went out, as you know, and got a $280,000 grant for uh, trail work there. We actually did tap into CDBG money as well and state funds. But other than that, I think what we've got to do is focus on taking care of what we have. Um, in terms of locations, Aaron may have some ideas for you, Andrew. Certainly the section through Lawrence Swamp. Um, it's, you know, winter is a good time to go through Lawrence Swamp if there's not too much snow on the ground, but there are extensive areas of, of uh, old bog bridging there, bridges that have um, uh, rotted away. I just want to emphasize that by and large, some of the, so the focus should be on large bridges, bog bridging and correcting, as Aaron said, correcting um, kind of ecological damage that culverts and old bridging and trails. You know, years ago when we put in trails long before any of us worked for the town or volunteered for the town, um, trails were just put in anywhere and often they damaged the, the resource areas. We're trying to correct that. So we're gonna be after this for the next 10 years, but I think we've made a lot of progress even in the last, three or four years to, to address some of the backlog of, of projects. The other thing I would say is many of these bridges, if we do them, they're good. We're trying to build them for 30 to 40 years. I mean, there's two bridges at Amethyst Brook that are made of telephone poles. Those things have been there, I, I don't even know how long. They predate me, they go back to Pete Westover. They've probably been there for 25, to 40 years and they're still standing and still functioning. So what we wanna build is things that last a long, long time. And that means building them well, um, spending a little more money. It is pressure treated lumber, but they've got new, uh, new pressure treated lumber that is less impactful and uh, less leaching. So long answer, sorry. Aaron, your thoughts on specific areas. Yeah, I was going to su suggest Larch Hill. That's a really great place to walk because you can see the extent of bog um, uh, boardwalking and how much boardwalking there is um, and the condition that it's in. Um, another good one to look at is the, Har the um, National Guard Bridge on the Harvey Allen Trail, just to get a sense of sort of the scope of how big it is and how large it is. Um, we're talking in some cases, you know, 30 and 40 foot spans here, which are pretty significant. And then the other one I was gonna suggest visiting is Amethyst Brook. Again, to see the condition of the existing bridges, we're, we're looking to put a bridge in there, but the other bridges are also very old and gonna be coming up on needing replacement in the next couple of years. Yeah, thank Great. you, Aaron. Could you uh, do the committee a favor and just reference the location approximately where those three areas are unfamiliar yes. with some, but yep. Larch so, Hill, go ahead. So Larch Hill mm -hmm. is um, on South Pleasant Street. It's um, just north, or just, it's actually right next to the common school and just north of Bramble Hill Farm, um, if you know that general area. And then um, the Harvey Allen Trail is off of Southeast Street, sort of coming from the bike path side. Um, if you come in from Southeast Street and um, walk south on the bike path, the trail cuts in um, in an easterly direction shortly after you enter the bike path. 
Um, if you just stay on that trail and sort of go left, <laughs> you'll come right out on it. Um, and then Amethyst Brook is on, um, is it Pelham Road? I think Pelham Road. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, going towards Pelham on, yeah, right right near Fort River School. Well, one uh, thing, if I could just add. towards 202, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. One thing, if I could just add is, I, I think two thoughts. One would be that we need to do a much better job on accessible trails. We have a few. Uh, Aaron showed a few pictures of them. They need work. Uh, Larch Hill is a great example. Um, that boardwalk was built by the a engineering uh, fraternity at the university uh, back when I was the executive director of the Hitchcock Center for the Environment, which would have been in about 1987 or 88, 89, somewhere in there, maybe 91, sorry, early 90s. Um, anyway, a wonderful resource, but it's it hasn't really received much attention since then. Um, but we need to do a better job. I will just call your attention over in Hadley on Moody Bridge Road is the Conti Refuge, the accessible trail over at the Conti Refuge. I don't know how many of you have been there. It's an amazing resource. I can't tell you how many people have said, boy, that's where I go when I want to explore the out of doors. And it kind of gets me like, whoa, I wish people were saying that more about our trails. And I think people love our trails, but some of them need TLC. The bridges and the boardwalks and the ADA trails need, need that TLC. I want, I want to have the best, I want us to have the best trails in Massachusetts. We're not there yet. Um, but of any municipality, I would hope that you know, that would be my goal working with staff and you and, and funding sources to say we have the best uh, trail system in Massachusetts, the most accessible, um, the most uh, environmentally conscious with regard to resource areas. Uh, and, and we welcome people of all abilities and ages and, and whatnot to enjoy them. So that's our goal. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we're we're getting close towards the next uh, presenter. Tim, I see you have a question. Uh, sure, and and maybe in a follow up written response would be fine. Uh, in my judgment, uh, frankly, I don't really have any issue at all with the need here. I have an issue with the cost, and as you know, there are lots of competing. Uh, needs. And I'm just trying to understand the reason for the 100. I mean, if we say 50 rather than 100, you could do something, but maybe not as much as 100. And the other thing is like, what's the, you probably don't know, but what's the universe? Is it like a million dollars when you're just to do all the trails uh, reasonably well, and you're asking for 100? Or where does that 100 fit in terms of the long term? Because I'm assuming if you don't get approved for the entire amount this year even if you do you might be back next year maybe the year after to do some more trails and more trails that kind of thing and i'm just trying to get a sense as to the universe here of the cost to do this trail maintenance and so on so i think when real quickly i responded to sam's uh inquiry about could we do with less absolutely sure i'll be perfectly honest we can we can, we can do as much as we can do with what the committee and the council ultimately recommends. Um, but yes, we will be back. My goal uh, would be to be back almost every year asking for money to enhance and uh, fix problems on the trails, whether they be bridges, parking areas, make things more accessible, make trails more accessible. Um, I don't have a figure, Tim, but it is certainly, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh, repair, expand access, all of those things. I mean, it's one thing to work on uh, um, repairing, enhancing an accessible trail. It's a different figure if you're going to build a new one, right? Okay. So um, again, we're not expanding the trail system with the exception of Hickory Ridge. We're not adding new trails really anywhere in town. And we haven't bought land in a few years either. We're trying to fix what we have. Um, but I think annually, this is part of taking care of the resources that the town has in a more responsible and sustainable way. And CPAC is just one of the sources we go to for those funds. Thank you, Dave. There was one question that uh, was uncertain, which was uh, the current balance of CPA funds that remains from prior 
cycle awards. And I know that you had indicated there were some some work that had yet to get invoiced. Do you believe that uh, uh, you or Sonia or someone could get back to the committee uh, with the current status of CPS, CPA funds at some point? Yeah. Uh, for the next meeting, I'll have a report okay. with the remaining balances. Great. And, uh, Aaron, I saw your hand go up and come down. Are you good or do you have a quick comment? I, I just wanted to say for for just to give some reference to the to the hundred thousand, just one of those small trail bridges, which was uh, pulling out two failed culverts on a trail system and restoring the stream bank and putting in a bridge was twenty two thousand dollars just for that work. And that didn't include the delineation, the survey, the permitting work that went into that. So you're probably looking at $30,000 just for that one crossing. So it gives you a sense, you know, in scope or scale that that's like four small footbridges if you're talking about a restoration. Great, thank you. Uh, I certainly uh, appreciate and utilize many of the trails in town. I hope uh, uh, as many members of the community are, as are able will have access to them. Uh, thank you both. Uh, and thank you, uh, Aaron, for your presentation. Perhaps we'll see you in subsequent uh, cycles as well. Uh, thank you, Dave. So we're, our next um, presentation is, again, from the town of Amherst, and it's the War Memorial Bathhouse Preliminary Design, followed thereafter by War Memorial Pool Improvements. And we have listed. Uh, Amy Rizeki, um, I saw her previously. I'm here. Oh, oh, you're here. You switched from the attendees into the panelists. There you oh. are. Great. Uh, we can hear you. It sounds like you can hear us. Uh, thank you for waiting. And we'd be glad to hear you uh, talk about your uh, first uh, proposal, the bathhouse preliminary design. Great. Um, and, I'll, and I'll just introduce myself quickly because uh, Amy Rizeki, uh great job with the pronunciation there, Sam. Um, I've been working for the town for 12 years, but believe it or not, this is my first time coming to CPAC normally. Either Guilford Mooring or Alan Snow, I think, has presented the Welcome. public work project. So thanks for having me. Um, the first one that I'm going to talk about is the War Memorial Bathhouse. Um, and you guys probably know and have probably been there, but this is a bathhouse that was constructed in 1953, so it's nearly 70 years old. Um, and at this point, it's just kind of outlived its useful life. We've done everything we can to try and limp it along. We continue to try and limp it along, um, but it's 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 in need for many reasons that you know you've seen in all the proposals. It's in need of um, either a major upgrade or more likely a replacement. Um, and you know what what I guess is kind of complicating this a little bit is knowing that there is a big master plan for that entire area of utilizing that space better, potentially having you know another another splash pad, having other outdoor spaces and that sort of thing. And so simply just replacing the bathhouse in kind without taking a pause to look at the, the broader conversation of what do we want this area to be and what do we want this bathhouse to potentially serve? Um, that's uh, That has to get looked at a little bit so that we can figure out the right size, um, whether this bathhouse is only gonna serve pool users or whether we want it to serve as a bathroom facility for people that are using the park year round, people um, playing games in nearby community field, um, things like that. So, um, so it's not only figuring out the ideal placement, but also the usages and whether this is a seasonal facility, a year round facility, um, and that sort of thing. So, um, I think, I mean, I'm happy to take questions. I feel like I answered a lot of questions, um, in writing. And so hopefully you guys have a lot of, um, information already. Uh, thank you, uh, Amy. Good to see you. Uh, certainly welcome to be here, and uh, thank you for all your work on behalf of the town and the community. Uh, I'd like to open it up for committee members if uh, there are any questions or comments. I see Katie's hand. Can you unmute, Katie? Got it. Um, thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Um, I, I just had a question about timing, which I apologize if you did 
answer in the questions. I didn't catch it, but um, the funding that you're asking for wouldn't be available to the summer, which would, you know, so the summer of 2023, which would allow you to do um, the design and preliminary design. You're also asking for, so are we just taking one at a time? Sorry. Yeah. Darn. Sam, I can I ask for both? Can I ask? Uh, you you might as well continue with your question. Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, only because it just seems I just want to understand timing of sort of like when renovations would happen. I mean, it sounds like you need some things fixed, which wouldn't get fixed for summer 2023 because the funding wouldn't be available till July. Or correct. Maybe so that would be funding for fixes in terms of the um drainage and things like that later? Yeah, like, they, um, for the pool, um, so- Which is separate project, from the bathroom. Project number two. Right. Um, yeah, we understand that um, we, we would be pushing pretty hard to pull everything together, put that out to bid and be able to get the work done before the pool season. So um, in terms of the, the pool repairs. So putting this in now means we can pull everything together, you know. You'd have the, the we would know of that funding. once it shut down in August next year, we would have several months of being able to do um, the repairs at that point. You know, the working on pools is kind of hard because you have to straddle them being able to be used in the summer. And so you have to just use a little bit of time in the spring and a little bit in the fall. Right. Uh, sometimes fall is a little more predictable because we know when the closed date is and they can go in the spring. You just have to keep waiting until the weather window opens. Um, so, so I just wanted to understand that yeah. if there was any sort of interaction, because you were just describing, which I really appreciated the fact that you don't want to necessarily, uh, you want to think about the entire area and the concept of, of what, how this will be used and what other, you know, how it might need to be changed or adjusted in terms of scope and scale and in the design process. So I just didn't know if it would have impact on the drainage area, for example, or anything like that. And if those two things interacted, these two projects in any way. They they don't necessarily interact in turn in the, I think in the way that you're suggesting the, okay. the bathhouse project. Um, this is a longer term. We first have to figure out what we need. And that's what we're coming to you with is saying, we need to figure out what we need. Once we know that, then then it can go out to bid. And you know, to be clear, as you've seen in the um in the responses, you know, once we know what we want, then we can go after park grants and other sources of funding for the actual construction. Um, so our plan is not to be here next year, then asking for the next phase of that project. We just need to, you know, we need help with the funding to gather that initial information so that we can okay. go after those other sources of there funding. There is an, an impact on, on these two yeah. projects. That can and it's a multiple, so that one's a multiple year project. This is just kind of the first phase to get the ball rolling. Right, got it, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Amy. Matt, I see you have your hand up. Yes. Uh, I hope you won't take this question the wrong way because it might come across as a little bit of a nuclear bomb. But um, so we're looking at like 350,000 now, we're talking about investing into this and then down the road, another like three and a half to five and a half million. My sort of question is like, how does the town need two outdoor pools? I, that, I mean, I will honestly say that's, that's a question that I think the community needs to evaluate. You know, I don't know that that's for me to give a, a yes or no. Um, I know that both pools are used, uh, you know, very regularly. Um, and so with only one pool, we might not have enough facilities to support all the people that want to swim in the summer. Um, but again, I think that's a very real conversation that you guys need to have. Yeah, uh, I have just one other. Oh, well, maybe we should just continue on that topic. Uh, Michelle. I just wanted to comment on that particular subject that I have two small children that I wanted to get swimming lessons to and I could not even between the two pools fit them in because it booked up so immediately and there is no space left so 
I do think that two pools, one, you know, North Amherst and one more close to South Amherst is a very well used community resource. I just want to comment on that. I'd like to also uh, reiterate what Michelle said, having grown up in town uh, and having had kids take lessons that my experience has been uh, through the many years that they're both widely utilized. Uh, Dave. Dave Zomack? Yes. Your hand Can is you up. Me? Um, I just want to point out, you know, Ray is here, and, and I, I was hoping Ray could speak to the issue of, you know, the, the utility of, of War Memorial Pool and, and the two pools we have. Um, I, before I um, hope Sam would uh, acknowledge Ray, I just wanted to ask, Matt, I was curious, where did you come up with the 3.5 million? Where did that, where is that from? That's in answer, that's in uh, Amy's answer to um, what is the best guess estimated cost of the enhanced War Memorial Area project. So Th of the actual construction. Not just the pool. That that's the number from the Weston and Samson report oh, to redo okay. that entire area, including the pool, including the bathhouse, including a new water feature playground and the <laughs> other things designed. So, oh, okay. It's the only number we have. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yes, I took a big gulp there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a. I mean, that was from about five thousand feet. A couple of. Okay, so you think you, you think there's a there's a good chance the scope will be smaller than that. I, I, I think so, but we're we're not launching into, you know, a three point five million dollar renovation of of that space yet. I think, <laughs> excuse me, Amy was right. We we need to really assess what needs to be done, what can be done, and what the possibilities are there <laughs> before we go there. Uh, thank, Please, thank let you, me Dave. turn it over to um, Ray. <laughs> so, uh, Ray, I see you're here. Uh, yes, we'd love to hear from you if you wish to to uh, uh, speak to us. Hi. Thank you, Sam. Um, I, I mean, I can speak really quickly to Matt's question. The, uh, the, the pools are, the two pools are a really valuable resource for us. We, we, during summertime, I think it's a, it's a need for the town to have two pools operating because there's an overflow issue. We found out this year, certainly when, when we had mechanical issues at war, just how difficult it was to program lessons and lap swim and do all those service. Uh, there's large revenue gained in the two pools from outside communities because every town doesn't have the luxury of one or two pools. And so we run into the issue, even with the two pools on their, at their best, we run into the issue of having Amherst residents having to wait at capacity outside while the pools are filled. The pools will be filled. We're we're exploring different ways to uh, make them uh, uh, to to increase their versatility and do different things at the pools. But having those two pools is a viable resource as as being able to complement that with other options. Other indoor options are also. But I, I mean, community members will probably. Uh, I don't know because I haven't done that specific research to answer that question right now. But but the, uh, the I I assume that as the parents in the room have attested, I think that the the uh, uh, the the, uh, uh, the the queue gets filled pretty quickly for all of our activities there. It's not for, it's not a waste. I would go quicker to three pools and I'd go to one, <clears throat> but that's not going to happen. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, and uh, I hope things are going well in the uh, rec. Recreation Department. I don't envy your logistical uh, issues at various points in the summer and other times. Thank, thank uh, you, Sam. <laughs> I'm glad you're, you're it's going, going good. It. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. Uh, Tim. Yeah, I don't want to uh, bore others, but uh, just I am not familiar of where the second pool is. I mean, I'm not here in the summer. I don't have young kids. I'm near a huge pool in the summer. <laughs> but uh, uh, where's the second pool? So the pools, one is the community field at uh, right on the grounds of Amherst Regional. Uh, oh, and, then Mil and then Mill is in North Amherst at the Mill oh, River okay. recreational area. Thank you. Mill, Mill is the one that is more frequented by 
by outsiders. I think it's sort of removed from some of the downtown pieces. Uh, it's a bigger pool and it accommodates more as a children's waiting pool there. And so there's slightly different cultures and different features of the pools, but, uh, but they, are, they are both uh, basically used to capacity. Well, Thank I'll you. just I'll just add to that that as as Ray's saying, like the mill pool, it seems like that's where a lot of people go for community swim and that sort of thing. And that means that War Memorial, while it gets used for the public, a lot of the users down there are the recreation department doing swim lessons and camps and stuff like that. And so being able to have space for both of those, um, like that's how we're able to strategically do that. So um Thank you, Ray and Amy. Uh, I guess I have a, there are two different proposals in front of us uh, regarding the pools. One is for design and one is for improvements. Uh, we're sort of talking about both of them. Um, I did hear the design being as something that's necessary as a part of the longer term potential plan with an unknown at present uh, potential capital expense. Uh, but the what I heard from you, Amy, was that the uh, the thinking is to know where the town wants to go. And in order to do that, the design is uh, important, uh, whatever that longer term plan might be. Um, and I may have a question later on the the thoughts of the overall capital expenses, uh, but it sounds like that's perhaps premature because we're doing the design phase first. Uh, but you also wanted to talk about the improvements. Um, I think it's a good time to start talking about that. Robin, uh, I see your hand is up. Do you want to ask a quick question now or would you like to allow Amy to talk it's about the improvements first? It's actually related to the improvements. So go ahead, Amy. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so the second project, which obviously we're talking the same location, although they're they're very separate. This one is a an, an actionable repairs will be made. Um, and it's uh, the War Memorial Pool. Again, if we're going to invest in this area um, and continue to keep it operational, it needs some improvements as well. Um, and there's kind of three things at the pool that need to happen. Um, one is that the ADA lift that's there right now, um, or that, that isn't there right now, we need an ADA lift um, to get, to make the, the facility um, ADA accessible. So that's item one. Item two is we have to do some repairs to the drainage. Um, and partly we are right now kind of grandfathered into the, you know, Virginia, Gra Virginia Graham Baker, I might have that wrong, um, regulations in terms of safety for, uh, for the drainage structure. So we do technically meet the regulations, but not really the modern standard of the regulations. Um, the, the drainage structure on this uh, pool is also vintage uh, 1953. So it's also 70 years old. And so the steel drainage is um, eroding to the point where there's a pretty massive leak underneath uh, the pool. That's just anytime the pool is full, we've got a lot of water that we're losing out of this, the drainage structure. Um, because of that, a massive amount of repair, they're going to have to cut out portions of the pool structure in order to repair things below it. So ultimately, um, you know, we need the pool to be relined. Um, and so the fact that we're kind of at that 10 year, this should be relined. Um, we're, we're trying to kind of line it up so that all of these things, it gets repaired at, in the time when it should be relined. Um, and then also the ADA accessible chair. So those are kind of the three components that are all coming together in this one project. Uh, Robin, oh, excuse me, are you, do you, would you like to speak further, Amy? No, that's great. I didn't know if Ray had anything to add, but. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. he's shaking his head. Okay, uh, Robin, no. go ahead. Okay, so my question, and I asked this question um, in the written questions, and I'm gonna revisit it again, because I just wanted to get some clarification. And it's basically around um, one of the prohibitions of CPA funding, which doesn't allow for funding of maintenance. And so in my question, um, I asked, uh, because the liner, which is I think $75,000 of the project funds, uh, needs to be replaced, I think every 10 years, um, and it's coming up to that 10 year mark, my sense but that that would be interpreted as a maintenance item. I understand that that you've lined up the liner with 
um, with the repair. So if you had like a two-year-old liner and you had a repair that had to happen and you had to sacrifice that liner, I could see that as an out of cycle issue and not necessarily maintenance. But if it's reaching that 10-year mark, I'm not clear why there aren't those $75,000 in funds in the regular budget that the town would be anticipating at this point in time anyway to spend on that project. And particularly in this, um, in this grant year with the CPA where we have so many asks um, to be able to access those funds, which would be a normal part of the uh, whole process anyway. And it is on that normal tenure time schedule. Um, so that my question is that, my question also for the town officials is, would that be a violation of CPA rules because we would essentially be funding something that's a regular maintenance item that might be driven by, well, it's not, if the, at the tenure mark, it's lined up with the repair. It's not really driven by the repair if you're already at that tenure period when it needs to be replaced. So who is your question directed to? <laughs> I get, I mean, I guess it's, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's the town, right? It's, it's, bo it's on both, both sides of it. It's the, it's the recreation department's question. Would anyone about. care to comment yeah. uh, or respond to Robin's <laughs> I mean, question? Yeah, does well, anyone? I I can um, say that I will look into it further, but there's a there's a lot of um, I think it's interpretation on some of these things. So it depends on how the DOR or the coalition interpret interprets that. So I'll double check on all that. Uh, Dave, I saw your hand come up in at the time of Robin's question. Was your hand up in relation to her question? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to, uh, sorry, Tim, I no, see you there, but I'm going to call on Dave. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, I think matter. it's a great question. And I think Sonia's right, which is there is some room for interpretation here. I think historically Amherst, we've had the CPA, I believe since 2003. Um, Sonia and mm -hmm. I have been around the table pretty much that whole time. Um, and we have taken a pretty, conservative, I would say, interpretation of, of the CPA legislation. I think um, we have funded other similar um, similar improvements to the pools, both at War Memorial as and, and, um, and Mill River. Um, I think this would qualify for CPA. I think, Robin, the, you know, the deeper question that you have is, you know, should this be covered by the capital plan, you know, for the town? I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of um, items that have come before the CPA that we have funded in the past that we could ask that question. And I think in recent years, there's been more interplay between the CPA uh, fun, funded projects and our capital plan. But this is a conundrum for towns is, you know, we can't fund everything under under capital, so we look to other sources, and CPA is one of those sources. I would say that in my mind, if if Amy, if DPW and the and the town, if you will, you know, DPW is the town. We are all the town. We're all part of this this team working on these projects to maintain and enhance our recreational resources. If we were coming to you and saying we want money to paint the bathhouse. If we want money to paint, you know, the lines on the pool, um, that to me is is more annual maintenance. But these big ticket um, cyclic issues, like, you know, yes, this does need something every ten years. We we uh, some years ago we did um, the the filter system. We enhanced the filter system up at Mill River using CPA dollars. Now that is probably a 30 year um, a 30 year cycle to to enhance and replace some of the filters you might say well that should be capital but it's it's not something you do on an annual basis so that's a long okay. way to say there's some interpretation here we 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 do we don't take this stuff lightly we try to come to you with with items that we think other communities have funded through CPA and the and the CPA coalition would we'd find consistency among communities. So I, that's and, a long answer. And if I can add, it, it really falls under preserve or rehabilitate, in my mind, mm -hmm. for a liner because it's preserving that 
um, recreational area yeah. or rehabilitate, rehabilitating, rehabilitating yeah. the pool. If you look at the CPA chart, we really, we go through every one of these town projects and we, we try to make sure we're fitting them within the chart. Sure, sure. I think, I just think, uh, uh, you know, looking at it more from like, and I, I know that this isn't the same, but like, you know, from a household budget perspective, like if I anticipate that I'm going to need to replace my roof every 10 years, by year nine, I should have 90% for what I'm going to need for my new roof. That's where I'm sort of wondering why there isn't, it, and, and I know that town budgets work differently than home budgets, and, but that, that was my sense of sort of, you know, was there anything there that could be put towards it, especially in, a, in such a challenging year? But thank you for, um, thank you for answering the question. Uh, thank you for the question, Robin and Dave and Sonia. My, my comment uh, to your question, Robin, would, would be that it seems similar to me that an issue that came up uh, different in scope uh, last year with a housing project where there was reparations and also painting. Uh, and so my comment based on that is different members might interpret it differently. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I, I dug into the interpretation guidelines, I think it was page 56 or thereabouts relating to painting. Um, it's a worthwhile inquiry, uh, but, you know, we're here as a committee to talk about all the different projects. And, uh, Tim, thank you for waiting. I see you. No, it's not a problem at all. And in the interest of um, the other applicants in, in the queue here, uh, I would be perfectly happy to have these applicants respond to us in writing to this question. The question is, between the two projects uh, with limited funds, which would you put as the higher priority, doing the so-called repair maintenance of the pool or the design of the uh, bathhouse and the area in that regard. So uh, we're gonna have to make that decision and I'd be interested to see what you feel. Um, and within the design, my notes again show there was a design for the war memorial area and then also a design for the bathhouse. So if those two are distinct and different, does one have priority of the other? And that's what I'm interested in understanding from your perspective. If you only had limited dollars, where would you place your priorities? Would uh, anyone wish to respond to that at this can, point? At this point, we, Amy, I don't want to steal your thunder. Maybe we could talk about that as a staff and get back to you in writing, if that would be okay, because we want to be respectful to other applicants who still need to present tonight. That would, that be, would be fine suggestion. with me if it's okay yes. with Sam and the others. Uh, that, that would be fine from our perspective. Uh, the only suggestion would be to try to get back relatively quickly because committee members have to consider all the different proposals and seek to come up with initial uh, straw polling ratings for a conversation uh, in, in advance of a meeting next Thursday. So. Uh, uh, thanks for the question, Tim. Uh, it's something uh, I might have asked as well. Um, Matt. Yeah, I just have a very short question. Um, so in your response to the uh, questions, you said that the Warren Memorial Pool receives roughly 152, 200 visitors each day. Um, how, how long, what is the season that the pool is open? Is it just the months of July and August? Essentially, it, it opens... I think it's like the second or third week in June. So right about when schools oh, are closing and okay. then it stays open through Ray. Right, yeah, Ray will know this off the top of his head, but it's, I think they stay open through the last week in August, typically. That or is accurate. Through, maybe through Labor Day. That is accurate, yes. Yeah. So about about 10 or 11 weeks. Uh, mill, mill, I'm sorry, uh, War Memorial closes a little bit earlier than Mill because when we get towards the end, we lose staff. We we consolidate and move to one pool uh, and mill is bigger, but but that those dates are, are appropriate. Uh, thanks. And I have one other question, uh, Amy, which is on the design. There was a budget request of 200,000. Uh, I'm wondering how firm that number is, or is it a best guess? Um, do, you know, do you see any uh, uncertainty in that figure? I, I, it's, it's a best guess with talking to engineers that do this work on the scope to find, you know, that we're in the right ballpark. Okay. 
So. Uh, in other words, would that be in line with what Tim was asking for the grander uh, vision or for the smaller uh, project? Are, are you asking if that 200,000 yes. is for the, the bathhouse and the area design? Correct. Yeah, so it's it's for the preliminary design of both of those. And so I think in the budget, we actually submitted if you did just the bathhouse, you know, we think it's, I want to say it's one one seven one twenty five, and then the other one seventy five, um, for just kind of looking at the whole area. Um, uh, great, thank you. I thought I'd inquire for those who are okay. listening. Um, are there any other questions from committee members or the presenters? Uh, would anyone, Amy, Ray, Dave, uh, like to speak further on the project uh, at this time? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you, and uh, we'll look forward to your uh, response to the question that Tim had asked, uh, or you know, your version of a response that would address that. Uh, we have one more proposal presentation on our agenda for today. And I'd like to thank the members for patiently waiting. Um, it's the Fort River Communication, excuse me, Community Recreation Fields Project, which was submitted by a number of town residents. I believe the lead uh, leads were um, Maria Kapicki, Rudy Perkins, and Tony Cunningham. I, see a few folks in the audience and it looks like uh maria's in the room already maria has um, been added to the room That's i'm here I do i oh, need great. to bring in rudy could you please bring in Bru uh, rudy um tony is out of town so will not be able to join us tonight uh welcome maria uh, good to see you we can thank you. you and it seems that you can hear us uh thank you for your proposal uh, and for taking the time to come here to talk to us. Uh, this is the last proposal of the evening. Uh, we'd be glad to hear you uh, uh, make your comments and or present. Thank, thank you so much and thanks for the opportunity. Um, it, may I share my screen? Certainly. Great. Okay, so let us... Super. Okay, so thank you very much for having us here today. Uh, Rudy and I and Tony uh, put together this proposal and uh, I'd like to kind of get you oriented first. So we're talking about the Fort River School site. Uh, this is uh, showing what is there currently. So here's uh, the school. And right now the fields that are used for recreation kind of loop from the, along the entire Eastern edge and the Southern edge. And just to give you an idea um, of what we are talking about, um, the new, the school building project that's in progress is going to have a new school that pretty much is gonna land in the Southern half of this site, which means that all of these fields um, uh, that are down here will not be there anymore. and this is a, the approximate uh, location and uh, size of where uh, recreational fields, athletic fields will be um, to be out of the way of the school. So why would you want to support uh, improvement of athletic fields at Fort River? Uh, I don't know if uh, you guys have been there. I play on these fields. Rudy's kid plays on these fields. It is used by, heavily used by several organizations, softball, uh, soccer, uh, uh, ultimate, and um, uh, also by a lot of casual users. Um, so these are very well-loved and very well-used fields that are in deep need of repair. During the day, um, uh, the, the school day, this would be used by the school community um, and they would have other events there. But uh, in terms of recreational use, we're talking about after school and weekends. Um, the reason that this is so important is that these facilities that are used for all of these sports uh, and including the comfort station and the lighting that currently exists there will be 
lost to some degree uh, when the school building project happens. The comfort station is used extensively for the uh, kids that are coming after school and are uh, going to be uh, going into playing sports. The lighting is used uh, currently for softball and for football. And when the construction happens, those will go away. Uh, this also aligns using the uh, improving these fields with the open space and recreation plan that was updated in 2017. Uh, and it was actually in, as part of that plan, it was noted that these fields in, in particular were called out as being in an environmental justice neighborhood. And in the, the OSRP, it specifically uh, states uh, that we should, uh, in order to improve these fields um, for both passive and active recreational use, we should be looking toward, among other sources, CPA funds. So that's what brings us to you. So why CPA? The school building project is going to be partially funded by state funding, the, the Massachusetts uh, School Building Authority, but they cap their site costs at 8%. That might be changing, but not, um, uh, it might not change in time for this project. But that's a very, in, in terms of uh, school projects in general, just about every project goes over that 8% cap. So there's going to be a lot of money that would need to be invested in the site, including the fields, that would not be eligible for reimbursement from the MSBA. The CPA funding um, would decrease the amount that would be asked directly from taxpayers uh, via the debt exclusion. So in early May, there's, the, there's going to be on the ballot a question of will the uh, town, will the townspeople vote to increase their taxes to pay for this project? Now, I'll, I'm anticipating and hoping that a lot of people are going to be saying, yes, I want to do this because we want to rebuild the school. Yes, we want to do this because it's net zero and it has um, ground sourced heat pumps that are anticipated to be included. Um, and it's going to have solar panels and a lot of other reasons. But there are going, there are a lot of folks in town for whom this is going to be a financial challenge. And there is going to be a significant burden on uh, uh, that taxpayers are going to be asked to take. So if we can decrease the amount that is asked by taxpayers by any amount, uh, that will be, I think, that will help some people get to yes on the project, on, on the vote. Um, so that's the vote that's coming up in May. So the, the timing of this, and this kind of speaks towards one of your follow-up questions, the timing is critical. We would need to know before this goes out, not only for the vote, but in the lead up to the vote as we're, uh, as different bodies are trying to uh, tell taxpayers about why should you vote for this, um, what it will, what it will cost. And if we can say to folks, well, yes, it's going to cost this much money, but it is, but we are, we are seeking these other sources and we've secured other funds as much as possible. So for example, Inflation Reduction Act can help pay for uh, some of the solar panels. The uh, Eversource, there's a, there's a, a fund that can help pay for the geothermal. This would be a way to help pay for the recreational component. And um, I think that will also be important to let people know so that the people who find that these recreational fields are very important to them, this is a way for them to support it uh, as well. So a breakdown of the costs and you have this, uh, this is in kind of uh, overarching, uh, components. The athletic field improvement itself is about two and a half million, and that's based on two different cost estimators, um, which they were given uh, in, uh, a basis of design and they, they estimated slightly different square footage. I can go into more detail on this if you'd like. Um, so the athletic field is about 2.5. The field lighting, we use the Weston and Sampson estimates for field lighting for a different project to come up with an estimate here. And the comfort station, we used uh, JCPC numbers for Kiwanis Field uh, project uh, for about 200,000. And so the total being about 3 million. So this is, uh, in case you haven't seen it, a proposed site plan uh, from the uh, designers, the Danisco design. So again, here is the athletic fields in the north. So uh, 
what we are, the, the comfort station, as we said, is going to be uh, demolished. So uh, these are very conceptual. This is not us telling the design team what to do, but we are saying that comfort station could go up in this area. The lighting could go here. And then just to give you an idea, um, this area in the north could support four side-by-side -side ultimate fields, which is currently what the programs that use that right now need is four ultimate fields. Um, it could also support two softball fields, which is one less than what exists now, but um, two really good softball fields would be an improvement. Um, and then it can also support multi-use fields. I've drawn them in this way, but again, these are not uh, telling anybody what to do. With, uh, with the fields that, that is still in design. Um, so I'm gonna stop there for now and uh, take some questions, but I can give you some more information on the breakdown of the field because I know that there, uh, I, it, one of the questions that you gave to us was that some of the budget figures were a little daunting. So shall I unshare right now and? Um, yeah, if you're, if you're done and if, uh... If I have another slide I can show you, but um, uh, if, if that comes up with money questions, we can uh, bring that okay. back up. Sure. Uh, if the slides that you just presented are new, and I believe they, some of them are, uh, it would be great if you could share them with the Absolutely. committee, just uh, send them to Sonia. And I'd like to thank you for uh, the uh, presentation and also for all your hard work. Uh, over many years uh, on behalf of uh, Amherst and the, the school project. Um, uh, thank you for uh, your involvement. Um, I'd like to open up the floor to questions, uh, anyone on the committee who might have for uh, Maria and others. It's quite a, uh, quite a project. Um, Michelle. Hi, Maria. So I saw in the answers to your question that, that the school would be in charge of the maintenance of the bathrooms, or at least in part the materials, the comfort station. Um, and also that potentially might be tying into the electric of the lights, but maybe not, that there could be separation, but that the school committee approved only the athletic fields only I don't know if that include the lights, but it doesn't sound like it included the bathrooms. I, I guess I'm just interested in like the maintenance of the bathroom would be recreation department, maybe DPW would be tying, paying for the lights. So there's a lot of integration with different departments and Amherst and what's their input. And is this just gonna be assumed as a cost by them and have they approved that? Yeah, so a uh, couple things there. The the designers, since since we first uh, submitted this, the designers have indicated that that laying down um, the conduits and so on for the plumbing and the electrical, that's something that would uh, they're going to need that anyway to to for the school project. But anything associated with the comfort station and lighting is really not in the school purview. It's not in the school building committee purview either. They are they are tasked with designing an elementary school and that does not include comfort station and lighting uh, aside from putting the conduits in. So the school committee basically said, you know, that's not our that's not our business really. You know, it's it's the uh, it's the fields which they would be using the the school the Fort River school community would be using those fields. And that is part of the design. However, the, one of the reasons that we wanted to include it and we wanted to submit CPA uh, funding is that we are very aware that there will be some value engineering that could probably will be happening as this project goes along. We're right now just still in schematic design phase. And by securing funding for the recreational, the athletic fields, at this point, we feel that that will help ensure that those recreational field improvements will stay as part of the plan. In terms of maintenance, it, it, there is a contract. Um, and by the way, thank you again, Ray, for helping get answers to these questions because it, there are a lot of uh, different uh, bodies that are involved in this, but there is a contract that, uh, that, that the DPW has who, that are in charge of 
maintenance uh, and, um, and cleaning of the comfort station. The uh, lights, I should say, are currently not metered separately, but my understanding from the uh, school building committee is that that would be, they would want to meter the field lighting separately from the school project, particularly because this is a net zero building. Sure. Did, did that answer your questions? Yeah, I guess I was just wondering if this is going to be like an additional burden to the budget or the staff time of the rec department or if they're already doing it or um, yeah, like if it said the school is going to pay for like soap and bath tissue and stuff. So I don't know how big of a deal it is, but there's just costs being distributed across a lot of departments. So I was just wondering if everybody has agreed to that if, you know, going forward. Um, since it's a replacement of something that's currently happening, I would assume that however they're managing the comfort station and the monies there now would be the same, but obviously that's that's for the other departments to decide. Uh, thank you, Michelle Maria. Uh, uh, Andy. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, uh, Maria and Rudy for the presentation. <clears throat> um, so I have two questions. One, uh, I may have just misheard or misunderstood. Um, when you talk about the cap, that there being a cap for site costs of 8%, did you say that about 7 million would not be eligible for reimbursement or 7 million would be eligible for reimbursement? About 7 million would not be. Um, so, th and this might be changing. We have just heard some word at the, the school building committee that, um, uh, there is uh, there is maybe some talk about increasing that cap, but I don't know when that that's a, a legislature thing. So I don't know when that would happen. But n absolutely, I think they the designers said that they are aware of a single project that did not go over the the site cost cap for the MSBA, and that was in an urban setting where there was literally like no site to speak of. There was just a building on a on a plot. So every project go, goes well over the 8% site cost. Okay, so relative to the total cost. So I, I know, I guess maybe yeah. keep the math simple, but I think it's close anyway. The, the school project's in the neighborhood of 100 million, right? That was, yeah, that's the current estimate that we're, that we're working with. There will be new estimates coming out in the next sure. month or two, yeah. Okay, but in terms of the cap then, the like, we're saying that the, um, that seven million would come off of the hundred. So, like again, for simple math, the school might only be able to get ninety-three million. So, we're trying to cover that seven million with CPA funds. Does that make sense? No, 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 no. Sorry. Okay. Um, it, it, it's well. It, it, the 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 three million, the two point five million that we're putting for the fields is well short of. There's going to be. In, in addition to that, a whole several other million dollars of site costs that won't be reimbursed by the MSBA. So this is just taking a chunk out of those, out of that 7 million that we're not gonna get from the state. Okay. So there's lots more that we'll still have to um, be covering. Okay, all right, that helps. And then um, I, I can't expect you to have this answer now, but you know, actually maybe Sonia or Sean might, I'm just trying to understand the hardship because you know one of the points you made is that this will relieve the burden to the town residents in terms of the debt override. Do we have a general sense of like what that three million relief would look like relative to the debt override? Are we talking a hundred dollars a household a year or five hundred? I just I'm I'm not sure. So it's it, it's going to be based on um, a couple of things: the debt structure, which. That's that's gonna that Sean would have to tell you, I, and I don't know. The town finance um, department will have to determine how they will construct, how they'll figure out how to do the the um, the debt. It'll also be based on the size, uh, the assessed value of the home. So, I will absolutely, I, I would look to Sean to give an idea about what that would mean to you know what every million dollars of debt exclusion would mean to an individual household. And th this is one, I, I know putting guys on the spot, happy to get this after, if you can even provide it after, but it would help me understand a little bit better again, as we compare this to other projects, you know, is that is that really a meaningful number that that town folks 
can get excited about or is it a drop in the bucket relative to the size of what we're doing? I think it'll probably matter a lot. It'll be very individual. For some families, it, it, it's not gonna be a motivating factor, but I think that for families who are more struggling and are more limited financially, any little bit I think would be a very much appreciated and might move people to say, you know what, the town is trying its level best to limit what they're asking of me um, in increased taxes. And hopefully that, you know, that can move some people to yes for that reason. Okay. I mean, but fair to say it's like 3% of whatever the overall, I mean, we could maybe agree to that, that it's, it would be 3% less. Um, well, no, the, the, the total project cost right now is, a, is about a hundred million, but the Massachusetts uh, state uh, school building authority is going to give a significant chunk of change. So let's yeah, say yeah. just, I, I, please do, these are not real numbers. Let's say they, they fund 40%, right? And the project stays at a hundred million. So now that's 60 million dollars that you have okay. to fund. And then, uh, like I said, there's these other, um, there's other ways to decrease that 60 million as well, but this would be very good. Bringing, I, I, yeah, minimizing I, I it really as need. much as possible. I, 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 that, that helps. Thanks, Maria. No Sam, problem. can I just follow up on that question real quick? Uh, yes, Sean. Um, uh, Andy, I'll send out um, a debt exclusion tool and some information. We're, we're not, we're way being very deliberate in how we share the impact of the project. We want to do it once and be very clear. Um, and we're waiting for the new cost estimates to come out. Um, so we don't want to, we don't want to put out information in bits and pieces. Um, but that should be happening in the next month or two, as, as Maria mentioned, when we get those new cost estimates. But there is a tool I can share with everybody that's on the, the state website where you can plug in um, your home value, you know, the debt exclusion. You can see sort of what that impact looks like. So you can play around with different amounts just to start getting a sense of it. That's good. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, Tim. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure this is actually for Maria uh, or the town or Ray or, but my general concern issue in this project is why are a group of private citizens requesting these funds as opposed to the school committee, the school building committee, the town, town recreation department or some coordination? I just don't understand that. Uh, I don't know how those other town entities feel about this project. I don't know how it fits into the overall opinions as to the strength weaknesses of the school building program. Uh, but I really, really feel we need a lot more information on that. And it's way, in my opinion, way too premature to consider this right now without that input. And uh, as I said, I don't want to, for tonight's meeting, that is uh, probably not appropriate, but as we move forward in our discussions, uh, I think that's critical in my judgment. It just seems inappropriate to have a group of private citizens making this proposal to us. And um, we need to know a lot more how the town feels and why this, the request structure doesn't include town officials so anyway that's uh that's well i can I, I can tell you that the school committee did endorse this application uh they did didn't want to talk about the comfort station and the lighting but they endorsed uh the the field part which is their purview that's that's what they they would be involved with um we uh presented to the um amherst recreation department uh we Pre, we presented, we, uh, it was discussed at the, uh, we actually we did, we presented to the school building committee. They uh, did not have it on their agenda to take a vote prior to this meeting. Um, so they couldn't vote, but um, they have spoken favorably um, uh, about it, but they, uh, you know, they will hopefully take an official vote uh, to endorse it. The reason that we did this, uh, Tony, Rudy and I have been following this project very closely. Um, and we knew about the and CPA had been brought up by uh, not just us, it was brought up in, in many different uh, town committee uh, 
meetings in school building committee and school committee um, meetings. And uh, uh, Superintendent Morris even said, like, if somebody wants to, you know, if, if CPA wants to give us money for this, we'll gladly take it. But when uh, September rolled around, uh, when the we knew that the deadline was the end of September, and we specifically asked at a school building committee meeting, is anybody, it, are any official bodies planning on writing a CPA application? And they said, the answer was no. And this was already into September. And so we put it together and submitted it, not wanting to lose this opportunity. Um, and uh, we would, we would have absolutely welcomed somebody else uh, <laughs> writing the, the proposal and, and doing this, but uh, there was a deadline and we didn't want to miss the opportunity. Fine, um, I, I'm not going to debate it now, but it just is unclear to me if the school committee feels it's so important to have this school and so important that it will help reduce taxes for the citizens, why they weren't far more aggressive in asking for the funds as, to, as opposed to relying on private citizens. But I, I will, I'll stop there and we'll have that discussion when we discuss the merits of these projects. In my opinion, I don't wanna take this meeting for that discussion, so thanks. Thank you, Thank you for commenting, yep. Ken and Maria, for responding. Uh, I, I would just add a comment generically that uh, we have encouraged private citizens to uh, provide input uh, related to the CPA just because it is a community-based funding and uh, the pickleball courts from the previous year come to mind, which is a similar scenario of private citizens initiating something, uh, which was subsequently acknowledged by the town as something that was desirable. I, I hear your points though, Tim. Uh, relating to why is it not originated elsewhere. Um, I saw you looking to speak earlier, I believe, Rudy. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. If I could just add to the point, the the other uh, thing that could become a hang up down the line is the value engineering out of some portion or even all conceivably of the recreational fields in the project. There's three different value value engineering, of course, is, is just a fancy way of saying cutting stuff out of a project to make it cheaper. And um, there's three different periods of value engineering review built into the project schedule at different points in the design of the project. We know it's going to be under a lot of cost pressures. And by putting recreational funds from CPA in, that I think will help underwrite and preserve and protect the community recreational field uh, in the full scope that it currently is in the in the school plans. So uh, it's it's that's another reason, and that will then we think attract uh, community recreational users of the fields to the whole project and to supporting it. So. Um, it's not just the actual dollar amount to each family. Um, there's also the psychological impact of getting whatever millions uh, added in for this, but it, and then further is to protect the full development of the recreational fields, the drainage, the irrigation, the building it out as a level usable field. So just wanted to throw that in the mix. Thank you, Rudy. I did see something uh, related to a discussion, I thought, with the school committee related to the fields uh, recently. I don't, as you indicated, know if they voted or not, uh, but we certainly can check between now and next week uh, the confirmation, well, what, if anything, was discussed with the school committee related to recommending the fields project. Yeah, they they did. Yeah. They, they, they endorsed the field. That was my and understanding. And I want to be clear that currently the fields are in the scope of the school project and the school budget. I, I just want to see them stay there because I have an interest both in the, the school project and in the community recreational aspect. And I think underwriting it from CP, with some CPA funds will help keep them in the project. So uh, thank you, Rudy. I, I have a, a question, I guess, or maybe it's just a confirmation of my understanding. Uh, Am I correct that uh, the 
items listed in the project other than the lighting is uh, on the table to be presented to the greater community for a vote, a debt exclusion override, essentially. In other words, the fields are a component of the existing school project. Mm -hmm. And the question is not whether or not they will be included in the school project, but rather how they're going to get funded. Uh, and you're referencing uh, Maria right and others who are proposing this, uh, the time element uh, of uh, the, the potential benefits of making determinations in advance as opposed to later. And separate from that, just for the committee, um, uh, my understanding is, and I believe there's been confirmation of this, that I don't think the, the CPA committee would be in a position to award any funding for field projects once the town has committed to proceed with the school because then it would be fairly clear that we would be in fact supplanting funds that are already set to go. Uh, but am, am I correct, Maria uh, and or Rudy, that the, uh, the fields are a part of the school project regardless of what CPA does? The field improve some field improvements will be a part of the project. The comfort station and the lighting are not. They are right. not right. school uh, project. Um, but it doesn't mean that they will make it, uh, as Rudy was saying, till the uh, the that the the type of improvements, the um, the the drainage, the and the the really uh, building out as a proper athletic field. Um, that may not make it to the goal line, to the end line. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that is, I, 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 don't, I don't understand this nearly as well as you guys do in terms of supplanting, but that, that was a concern that we had too, that uh, if we were to come back, for example, next year, that we felt that that might be a problem. Yep, sure. Um, Andy, you had your hand up next. Um, Actually, Sean, did you want to? It was just quickly to say that we we did reach out to um, the Community Preservation Act Coalition and um, Stuart about the supplanting question, and he was pretty clear that the vote um, for this project would have to happen before the vote, but by the council would have to happen before the vote for the larger project um, to avoid the supplanting issue. So um, yeah. that's something, depending on your recommendation, we'll have to work out with the with the council in terms of their timeline. Uh, thank you, Sean, for confirming that, uh, Andy. And and um, yeah, I agree to that. So that actually, um, I know you have been presented with the question of can this be piecemeal? Is that another way we should be thinking about this? Is comfort station and lighting as as a proposal? And so I'll I'll make that as a comment, I guess first, and then maybe my, more. My question is: Would you say the primary driver of this ask is fear of value engineering, or is it we don't think there's enough money? The, there's, I would say the two drivers would be that uh, we think that by getting the funding, it enhance it, it increases the likelihood that the debt exclusion will pass. I think that 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 is, um, you know, I, I I this this project is going to come out to voters in May, and that's why we're coming here now is to increase those chances of its passage. I think the other component, um, I wouldn't say it's the primary, but it's the another component is if we can secure these funds for the fields to be improved in this way, then when this comes to its final development and when, when they're ready to, to put uh, shovels to ground, the improvement in these recreational fields, which will benefit all of the, you know, the, the entire town um, uh, for use, it will actually be improved and it won't get value engineered out. And there will be an upfront commitment of these funds that will sort of be a promise to the community from the recreational standpoint that this is going to happen. Um, that, and I think that's important to have now before we go to the exclusion vote. Thank you. Uh, Katie. I just, uh, sorry, I feel like I'm a little lost in the debt financing and and all of that because it feels like we would be at this level of request be using debt financing so i just i sort of I, i'm just not sure i understand 
and I apologize for not following the, um, I hear what you're saying, Maria, and I, I, I'm like, oh, that sounds good, but then I'm thinking it's not that we have $3 million. So yeah, I so don't know I, how that interacts. So the difference is that um, the way that the, the, the town is, is at this point planning on, pay, on paying the town's portion of this elementary school building project from a debt exclusion, right. which means that's asking people to increase their taxes There's over tax. and above, you know, so it, it, that is a tax increase. You're voting your own tax increase. So if we could say, well, instead of voting an increase of this much, we're at least trying to shade it down you know, it's going, you know, yes, you'll still have to, it's, it's we're still asking for that, but it won't be as much. So, as uh, if we so didn't the, CP, have this. the town borrowing money for the, to finance a CPA funded project like this wouldn't affect taxes, you're saying. Say, I'm like sorry, that. say that again. <laughs> yes. So, oh, or Sean, did you want it? Did Maria, you want is it okay if I add to please, your, okay. Um, please do. So, so likely, so the debt exclusion will obviously be debt, as Maria said, that would be an additional tax if the town right. approves it for that portion that's funded by the debt exclusion. Um, this project, the piece that would not be part of that debt exclusion if, if the CPA committee recommends it, um, would still be debt likely because you don't have enough CPA funds to fund it with all cash. So it would still be debt, but it would be debt um, paid back through CPA funds, which are already being assessed. Um, it. So it wouldn't be an increase in taxes, but it would still be debt um, funded by the CPA. Got it. That's helpful. Thank you. Thanks, John. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Uh, can you unmute Tim, please? We can't hear you, Tim. Excuse me. It's uh, in a way a, a political or marketing decision in a way too. I mean, you could say, we'll just wait for the for the uh, allocation of the funds until after the school project is approved. And then citizens would have to decide uh, whether that's appropriate. I think the argument here is uh, including, uh, having CPA funds available now would be a show of support that the town is in favor of this kind of project. Uh, in either case, the amount that the taxpayer is going to have to uh, uh, support with a debt override uh, could be whatever the total number is less that three million ish project cost, and it's just a matter of which um, bucket we're talking about. I think. Um, um, anyway. I. I I think Sean um, might be able to help with that. I think that was the supplanting question that if it happens after, if 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 we get CPA money after right. the town council authorizes this debt, we can't come to you for CPA money. Well, it if the town be... authorizes the debt that doesn't include this, why not? So you can't when the, when it's okay, Sam, if I just- Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Maybe I'm um, wrong. Go ahead, Sam. So when we go, when the town votes on it, they're going to have to vote the full project. You wouldn't be able to vote um, the project less something that isn't already in place. Uh, so the, the council will have to act on the full cost of the project, less any grants or reimbursement that are coming from the MSBA. Um, if the CPA is approved prior to that, our understanding by working through our, with our owner project manager that that can be used to support part of the project. Um, if the CPA funds are approved after, our understanding is that would be supplanting because the town council has already approved funding for the full project. So to make it easy, is three million? If say, say the project total cost is three hundred million, is it three million in the project for the fields and the lighting and so on? So, yeah, so that's a good. So the, the part that could happen after could potentially be the comfort station and the lighting because that is not in the okay. current but that uh, Fort point, River design. The 2.4, 2.5 would be in the total cost that would go to the... That's my understanding, the, Maria. That's, you, you got that I think from that's our, unclear. I, I think that's unclear. And we need to have clarity from the school committee and the building committee. And what I heard Maria say was they have far less cost and her $3 million request was for a lot more enhancement. And we're not talking the same apples to our apples here. And I just think we need to have a better understanding of that. 
it, maybe it would, this week might be a good right. time to show the, the slide that kind of breaks down that the field costs, if that's all right. Uh, that would be fine, uh, Maria. There's no sure. other presenters behind us, so it's fine okay. to continue. And it sounds like a, a, a question that uh, clarity could be beneficial. Okay, let me, oh boy. Hang on a second. Let me stop sharing for a moment while I get this to queue up in the correct way. Okay. Okay. So these, this is a breakdown of the field improvements. And this was taken directly from the uh, elementary school building committee's preferred schematic report, which was submitted and accepted by the Massachusetts School Building Authority earlier this year. There were two cost estimators, AM Fogarty and PMNC. And what I've this this top area is showing you the direct cost. So this is basically materials that were uh, that I, I pulled out. I'll show you the lines, uh, the line items separately at the bottom. But these were the direct costs uh, that AM Fogarty and PM and C had. The construction costs is based on this is adding things like contingencies, general conditions, so labor, that sort of thing, uh, brings it up by about 38%. And then the total project cost brings those numbers, this is in soft costs, another 25%. And this is all based on the, the cost estimators from that document that the school building committee produced. This is the average of those estimates. So this and this divided by two. I don't want to get this very confused, but the, these were based on about 157 and 100 and, uh, uh, 87 or something like that. Uh, so this is an average of about 175 or so square feet. It looks like in the newer plans, it's going to be closer to 200,000 square feet of fields, which is approximately what you'd need to have for side by side um, ultimate fields. So that's this column. But for some ease, maybe we should stick with this column. So these direct costs are broken down as follows. Oh, here we go. Sorry, um, I had the, the numbers here. Uh, this is the square feet of the yards by each cost estimator, the cubic yards of materials. So there were drainage, loam, topsoil, hydro seed, irrigation for each of the fields, and then softball materials. So $1.3 million is how much the materials would cost to do the improvements for these athletic fields. 1.8 million would add in labor costs and contingencies. 2.2 million would be the total fields. These numbers are a hair lower than what I submitted back um, in the middle of September because we determined that there were some parts of this. So this had been 2.4, so this is a little bit lower here. Um, uh, uh, that weren't actually part of the field itself. It was fencing and that kind of stuff. Um, it ends up being that $2.4 million in total project cost is kind of in between what I think that what it looks like the total field area is going to be. This is about 200,000 square feet versus 171. So does that make things any more clear or did I just muddy the waters more? If I understood, let me jump in for a second, Maria. Uh, if I understood yeah. Tim's question, the way I heard it was, uh, are the fields going to be a part of the project regardless of whether or not we vote CPA funds? And therefore, uh, if the project proceeds, are there any aspects of your proposal that would not, uh, that would be in addition to the expected school project. And my understanding so, is that was the lighting and the comfort station. Yes. So there, I mean, it's not going to be, you know, th this is basically the fields are going to take up the entire northern half of the of the site. But they're slated right? to proceed. Uh, uh, whether or not the CPA were to fund your proposal or whatever amount, the fields project is scheduled to proceed with the school vote. 
and the school planning group is deciding just how many square feet and what details. And what I heard, and, and I'll, let me finish, what I heard was yeah. that there might be some benefits of CPA funds to prevent some of the value engineering uh, aspects of removing some of the perks, for lack of a better term. Uh, forgive me for paraphrasing, but I don't know if that helps. Tim, feel free to mm -hmm. follow up with your question. No, I agree with that summary. I guess uh, the dilemma that I have is I'm just not, I, I would like to hear much more from the school committee and the building committee and uh, how firm that 2.4 million is. I mean, what to, the way I understand it, if the 2.4 is included in the overall cost of the school, let's assume it's 100 million, like uh, Andy had hypothesized. Let's say, assume if it's included in that, uh, if we're going to go for a, a debt override, whatever the, the debt or override won't be 100 million because it will be less the uh, building, uh, the state building uh, funds. Um, but whatever the debt override is, we could reduce that cost further by just saying we're taking out the fields from this project and we're going to ask future for in the future for monies for the fields and we're going to try to seek cpns for that's one option i don't know if it's a good option or not the other option is to now ask for the cpa to commit to fund that roughly 2.4 for the fields uh that would then be a, a source of funding other than the debt override for the town and uh, maria's argument is that might lower the potential tax burden for the average taxpayer because the debt override would be a little less. That's my understanding of what we're trying to talk about. What, but, what, I, what I heard Tim from Sean was that uh, the, the school fields are going to be a component of whatever is presented, uh, regardless of whether or not CPA moves forward. That is to say, it's not under discussion to present to the town for a vote, a plan that does not include fields. That's my okay. understanding. Uh, Fair enough. Well, All right, well, so that decision has been made. Um, I didn't know that, but okay, I will. That's what I heard from Sean. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a requirement that the scope that MSBCA agreed or whatever it is continues, as Sean said. We can't, I have we can't a, change the scope. Yeah, there, there's been no discussion about not putting fields there. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay, so the fields are in there, and then it's a question of whether we try how to good, how good they use are. Yeah. CPN funds now, or uh, if we do, it would help mitigate the amount necessary for debt override by the part upon the part of the town. And, and Sam, can I say one more thing? Sure. Um, and just to be clear, if the committee does approve this, again, it would likely be a debt authorization. Right. Um, the funds would not be borrowed until the project, until those costs actually start being incurred, which would probably be a couple of years down the road. Um, so it, it's not like we wouldn't go out and borrow right away and then you know start incurring costs now. We would wait until, until the, the cash flow for the project indicated that we had to borrow. I, I have one uh, question. Uh, I guess it would be for you, Maria. Uh, and it's following up on Andy's comment with the 8% MSBA. Um, my understanding is that the MSBA will be providing some amount of funding to, this, to Amherst for the school project, assuming it goes forward. Uh, when I see the 8% fee to 7 million, um, there's a cap there. And I was slightly confused as to what that meant if that cap is exceeded. Uh, does that mean that the total aggregate amount of MSBA funds that would be provided would be less, or simply that the total amount of funds would have to be allocated to something else other than the fields? So there's a there's a, several limitations that the MSBA puts on different components. Right. So for the site, they their rule is this, you can't get more than 8% of the total project cost for the site. But they also have caps on the construction costs. So not everything about the entire, e even the building itself um, is, uh, we're going to be over uh, so they their, their cap the, there. They, they aggregate components of their uh, funding 
based upon the specs and that arrives at a cumulative amount as opposed to we're going to give you a lump sum of 40 million instead they say we're going to give you 10 million for this 30 million for that and a certain amount for the fields for the site work excuse can me. i can i add to that sean sean yeah. please <laughs> um so what they do is they give us a stated reimbursement rate, which our stated reimbursement rate is somewhere in the 60% range. Yep. Um, but then they only allow you to apply that reimbursement rate. They apply that reimbursement rate within other restrictions. So if they, if they fix the site at 8%, they'll take 8% and they'll apply that 65% reimbursement rate and we'll get that back from them. But our total site cost may be well above that. So the effective reimbursement rate ends up being much, much, much lower yep. than what the stated reimbursement rate is. And as Maria mentioned, they do that with site costs, they do that with overall construction costs, they do that, I don't know if there's a couple other mm -hmm. things they do that with. Right. Um, so it's it's much much less satisfying when you actually see the final reimbursement. Glasses help, thank you. Uh, so um, are there other questions from committee members for uh, Maria, Rudy, or others? Um, Additional comments, Maria, Rudy, that you'd like to make? Well, it, yeah, for, for me, I got involved in this because of the school initially. And my, my youngest son, despite my white hairs, is still in our public school system and is playing uh, ultimate after school for the past year or so. So it was a revelation to me to see Fort Rivers use by so many of our students after school. I'm, you know, sometimes the field seemed like there were hundreds of people there because um, I was the chauffeur in chief, of course. And um, so I saw what an important thing it is that these fields are preserved in what we do at Fort River. And I wanna see the school project go forward. And that means that the voters have to accept it. There has to be a wide support by a lot of different constituencies in town and um, including this, we think the sports community. And so uh, I kind of came to this as, you know, as uh, because of my interest in seeing the school go forward, first of all, and making sure we take full advantage of the Fort River site. One of the big advantages to that site in our, all the site selection discussion was that it had these large fields flat around the school. And so that was, uh, Something I don't think we want to lose. We want to make sure they're fully developed uh, for good use um, by both the school and also the recreational community and our kids after school. So I hope whatever you can do to help that move forward. And we think a grant of something in the order of what we proposed will help that on both counts. So thanks. Thank you, Rudy. Um, Tim, I see you have raised Yeah, I hand. just wanted to, just before we end the conversation, I would like to, uh, and before we begin our discussions of all the projects, uh, Sean, can you provide us with the uh, annual or debt schedule for this roughly 2.4 million? Because I know we couldn't just use funds, we'd have to borrow. But if we have debt of X, that's going to have to go in the equation in terms of other competing projects. And we just need to understand that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we can. Normally what we do when you do your deliberation, if there's any projects that you um, anticipate you may want to recommend a borrowing for, we will give you a projected debt schedule or a couple different right. options for a projected debt right. schedule. So definitely that for this one. Helpful. And and if there's any other projects that you are leaning that way, we can um, give you that as well. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Sean, uh, and thank you all. I wish it, it would be great for everyone in Amherst if uh, we had just unlimited funds to do all these uh, wonderful ideas and projects that folks come up with. Uh, our task, we're going to begin meeting next week to start talking about the projects. Um, but we're, we're done with the presentations for now, so I'd like to thank Maria and Rudy and Tony, who's not here, for uh, presenting and uh, listening and responding to all of our questions. Uh, if we come up with additional questions, we'll email them to you. If uh, you're able to send the slideshow uh, to Sonia for dissemination to the committee, that would be great. Uh, thank you both so much. 
thank you so much for, you. for your time and attention. And uh, we know that you have an unenviable task and we really want to appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you. So um, that one was a bit longer, slightly more complicated than uh, some of the other proposals. Uh, it does complete our presentations. Um, I do want to remind uh, committee members that we have asked all of the applicants to respond to two questions, which I read earlier, uh, essentially the ones that David brought up in our first meeting. Uh, can you get by with less? And does this really need to be done this fiscal cycle? That's essentially what the questions were. We'll be hearing uh, responses and provide it. We'll be providing the responses to you all in aggregate when we get them, or if not, those that have responded, which will help in our deliberations. Um, our next item on the agenda is public comment. And I'd like to uh, invite anyone who is in attendance of this meeting, if they wish to speak, to raise their hand or uh, somehow some other means, let us know that you wish to make a comment. I'm not seeing, uh, I am seeing a hand up. It looks like it's uh, Kathy Shane. Um, can you grant Kathy access to the meeting? Sure. Uh, Kathy, I don't see her here yet. Hi, Kathy, I can see your uh, image and the uh, microphone appears to be muted. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, uh, wonderful, I'll, good I'll, to see you. I'll come on all the way. Um, so first I wanna make it clear, I am I am a town councilor. I am also ch chair of the school building committee, but I'm talking as a resident. Um, and I wanted to talk about two projects in support of them. Um, the first is the trails. Um, when Andy, when you asked about walking these trails, I think I've walked most of them. And uh, there are a few others that I'm gonna make sure I send Dave Zomek a picture and Amy, because the boards are missing as you walk over the bridge and your foot can go through the bridge. The rest of the bridge is there. But the what they've been doing to increase the accessibility on these trails and make them more usable has been truly remarkable. There are a few that a few years ago, unless you wore hip boots, you couldn't walk on them because of the level of flooding and the board structures. So uh, being wise about the money if they have unused funds i would i'm a counselor so i get to see this at the other end and we always ask the question how much have they got in the reserve but i think this trail system we have is truly remarkable um and is worth putting money in and i just wanted to supplement a little bit of what you heard on the school building project of the school the school uh primary school system owns those fields. So the building committee can't really say anything about the field specifically, uh, you know, in, in terms of it, it, the fields are in the project right now in what Maria's slide showed you, the direct cost part is clearly in, you can't easily separate the fields from everything else because when you saw the, where the building is right now, that building is coming down and a new building is being built. So we'll be restoring some fields that don't exist at all and turning them into playing fields. So the, the fields part of the direct cost is definitely in the budget. Um, and the Fort River project is more expensive than our other site was. We had a choice of Wildwood or Fort River because of the fields um, and the need to improve the fields. It's not just that there are more of them, but they don't drain very well. So it's it's an issue of making them more usable. So I just wanted to make it clear, Tim, you would ask, it's not an at it's not an add-on per se. You know, the the math when you start with the direct costs is in the budget. But when I asked the designer, can you break it out? And I said, well, you know, we're taking down the old school, we're putting in a field and you know, you can you can get pretty close with the direct costs, but the designer fees are for the whole thing. So, so just um, any amount of support would be a reduction and Sean will be able to give you the tool and what we're gonna have to ask taxpayers. Um, 
And later on, if there were additional field improvements, some point lights, some points that can come later. And this doesn't really need to hit your budget until 2025 um, in terms of the schedule of the school, because first the school has to be built before we go to the fields. So just on when he gives you when it's going to hit your budget in terms of your planning. So I just want to come back at could it be less? Yes, it could be less, you know, than the ask has been, but any amount would reduce it. So that asking how much does it reduce it? So we are as a town looking for where are there other sources of, of funds? Um, Eversource is giving us some, has incentive money for certain kinds of heating systems that are more effective. We're hoping to get some text cracks credits, but to put together an overall package to that makes a good show of we're trying to limit the impact on taxpayers, but we desperately need this new school. So I just want to make it's not a total add on. It's in the budget right now, um, but it's always been we knew by going to Fort River, if we were going to restore the fields, the fields were going to add cost to the project. So it's it's in our project budget. Um, and that that's it. Just speaking on behalf of people who are actually spending hours on this. And it's a totally exciting project we've got, I must say. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy, uh, for speaking out as a resident. I, uh, for new members, Kathy also is the liaison for our committee for the town council. Uh, and I'd also like to say thank you, Kathy, for the, the huge amount of work you do on the council and the perhaps equally large amount of work you have been doing with the school project. But that's what I thought. It's really hard for me to speak because I'm on the finance committee. I'm on the lead and I'm a counselor. And it's it's how many ways do I look at the these dollar numbers? They're all they're all coming in at us. So you're you're I would yeah. assume allowed to look at them as resident. <laughs> so thank you very much, Kathy. Um, so uh, the next item on our agenda is review any financial updates if needed. Uh, I have so I, I do have an update on our budget, but I also wanted to remind the committee that next week, the beginning of our uh, meeting is going to, going to be the public hearing. So that's when we'll have a bigger public comment, I guess. Everybody can speak to their projects if they support them or don't support them. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick. I think if I can figure out how to do this. Can you see that? Not yet, yes. What are you seeing? Are you seeing the agenda? Spreadsheet. Okay, good. So the only change on here is that we have received our state aid. So that is no longer an estimate, it's an actual. And it was a couple hundred thousand more than what it was. So our ending fund balance for this fiscal year 23 is estimated to be 9.7 or 9.8 million now, which carries down over and then the estimated surcharge and the estimated state match for next year, which brings us to 2.3 million. And then our debt service, of course, gets um, subtracted from that. And then what we have for these projects right now is 1.9 million. However, if we release the budgeted reserve, we'll have two point, almost 2.5 million. Everybody see that? I see it on the handout from the okay. floor, yes. So that's pretty much it. Nothing else has changed. Okay. So everybody get that 19, uh, 1, 1, 000, but then an additional amount, if the reserves are included, that brings it up to 2.44 uh, right. million. Okay. Uh, that's helpful. Thank you. Yep. Um, so I don't have any topics that uh, were not anticipated in the last 48 hours. Um, we've had a lot of proposals uh, brought before us and we have information on them. Uh, we still have the capacity to make inquiries, although at this point, uh, you know, we need to gather the information and try to 
come up with our own thoughts on these projects. There will be some opportunity for additional public comment, but as a committee, uh, our task at, at hand, uh, in addition to doing our own uh, research, is to uh, begin to, at our subsequent meeting, to start uh, coming up with ratings on these and we'll proceed in a deliberate uh, fashion. Uh, Dave, I see your hand is up. Dave Zomack. Yeah, Sam, I know you want to you want to end this meeting. I just um, I was talking to Sonia earlier and I I wondered if I could just bring up one issue that we're working through um, on a CPA related project and and just so the committee wouldn't be surprised to potentially see it on the town council agenda. Um, but very quickly, um, in help me out here, Sonia, it would be FY23, we asked for uh, some trail funding, um, which I believe is $150,000. Um, and it was specifically uh, targeted toward Hickory Ridge, trails at Hickory Ridge. Um, you may have seen recently that the Conservation Department applied for a park grant for Hickory Ridge for uh, essentially focused on accessible, an accessible trail there. And we were able to get $280,000 toward that grant. Our intention is to use the CPA funds that were uh, recommended by this committee to the Town Council and authorized by the Town Council uh, toward that grant. And I, I guess I didn't want the CPA committee to be surprised if you saw that on an upcoming um, council, town council agenda. We're going to bring it to the town council. Uh, it's part of a state grant. So the town needs to accept the grant and dedicate some of the land to this project at their at the council's meeting on 12-19 uh, on December 19th. So Sonia, was there anything more, you know, and, and I'm happy to forward uh, the various documents, memos to Sonia that she could share with you. I don't think this is anything extraordinary or out of the ordinary. Um, we leveraged the CPA funds with $280,000 worth of state funds. Um, but when we asked for the funds, we asked for them more broadly for trails at Hickory Ridge. And so th that money will go toward trails at Hickory Ridge, but we leveraged those funds and got 280,000 additional dollars there. For use at Hickory Ridge. At Hickory Ridge. All of the funding will be spent there as was intended, but I just didn't want the committee to see that and go, wait a minute. Um, Dave never told us about that. The town never told us about that. Sonia, does that, um, you know, does that capture it? Yep. Thank you for doing that. That's that sounds like a pretty good return on funds, assuming it's not digitized uh, coinage. <laughs> no, that's what we we try to do. You know, we try to go out there and and chase additional matching funds. But I just didn't want you to be surprised when you saw that potentially in the newspaper or on a council agenda uh, later in December. So thank you. That's, uh, that's uh, great to hear. The uh, funding award. Um, thank you, Dave. Um, so I, I don't have anything else on the uh, unanticipated uh, for uh, today's meeting. Um, okay, Andy? <laughs> I, well, just so making sure that we're all ready for the next meeting is, you know, we, we should have all of our preliminary scores ready. We'll be capturing those on the Thursday meeting. Or is there uh, going to be more public comment and just kind of open discussion? I just... Yeah, I mean, haven't confirmed the agenda, but what we've done historically when I've been in the committee and you as well is that the next meeting we uh, we enable public comment on the varying projects uh, and then we proceed to begin deliberation. Uh, and the onset of the deliberation typically has been that we uh, come out with initial votes on the um, straw polling, excuse me, not votes, just polling as to where we uh, we are. As a committee, we could, I suppose, talk about them all and come up with a straw polling, but really the purpose of the straw polling is for us to get an idea where we are, and then from there, talk about every project, all of them, 
not voting on anything because uh, we can all be influenced by the comments of other committee members and also by the overall project scope. So yes, Andy, uh, we would want to uh, arrive at that meeting with our own initial thoughts and uh, ratings on the projects to assist us mm -hmm. as we go through discussions. And the components, aside from the, the general uh, merits of the project is also factoring in however you wish uh, the varying expenses affiliated with it. The, everyone has their different, you know, means of doing it. I sometimes have, uh, you know, smaller dollar projects. Uh, I like getting lots of those, but that's distinct from the merits of the project. That's a budgetary issue. So all of you should, all of us should look at all the projects, everything that's been presented. Let's await for uh, any final responses that will be coming to us for the questions. Uh, and then we'll begin to talk about it and try to see how to proceed with this task in front of us, um, which uh, a lot of good projects and uh, the asks are certainly significantly larger than our current budget. So thank you for bringing that up, Andy. Hopefully I answered your question. Um, so uh, again, we'll be meeting next week. Uh, expect an email uh, before that meeting with the responses to the two questions that we posed to all applicants. Uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, and or to town staff, uh, Sonia, our, our liaison, that is to say Sonia or Sean, um, uh, just CC us both uh, if there are certain questions. And, you know, for new members, you might want to revisit the um, uh, links. I don't recall if I sent them to you or not, our deliberation process. I do have it. I'd be glad to send you our sessions from last year, just so you get an idea of what we do. But, um, we'll go from there. And uh, yes, uh, I saw a hand come up and go down. That was just me, Sam. I, I just, I think I can ask this question offline with you, or I can okay. ask at the beginning of the about the straw polling, and if it's really necessary, if we are going to discuss every single project. I, I sort of see straw polling as how helping to prioritize which ones we might not need to talk about because we're not going to fund at all if, um, the, if the group agrees. But if we're going to talk about all of them, then maybe we don't need to straw poll and just simply have discussion about each one and then vote at the end. I think the straw polling is helpful because it gives us context as to which ones might come into play. It gives a number that's associated with it, tells which ones there is less interest in. It's a clarification of thoughts that people have on them. So um, I, uh, the, the motivate the, the thought process is to kind of stick with the means that we've been doing it previously, um, but uh, we can talk further on that. But at present, the task is for us to come up with those uh, those numbers. We've done it every year, and I've I think it's helpful uh, to just give a give a perspective of where everyone's at. Okay, sounds good. So. Um, We'll, I guess we're, we're going to be busy soon, uh, and actually this week, I'll certainly be busy over the weekend, uh, and thank you all for coming. Uh, feel free to uh, ask questions, and hopefully we'll get a little bit of more information and start our process. Now, so we're certainly not going to, I don't anticipate our coming to conclusions uh, in one session, given the, the volume that we have to do, but we'll try to proceed deliberately. Uh, so it's currently 8.33 p.m. and I will adjourn this meeting. Good night, everybody. <laughs>